Starts at 12. The news at noon starts right now. First at noon, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and Speaker Dade Fallon announcing they've reached an agreement on an $18 billion property tax cut. This will be the largest tax cut in Texas history. Over $12 billion will be spent on reducing school property tax rates for all homeowners and business properties. Every homeowner who homesteads will get a $100,000 homestead exemption. Non-homestead properties valued at $5 million and under will qualify for a targeted property tax relief program called a service. Circuit breaker. That's part of a three year pilot project. There will also be savings on the franchise tax for small businesses, as well as newly elected positions on local appraisal boards. All righty, you know, it's hot. There's no two ways about saying that. But hey, at least, you know, some of our furry friends are trying to stay cool. Take a look at this picture of this squirrel splooting, trying to enjoy the cooler concrete there. And then I love this. Mr. Gino's got his own little spot complete with an umbrella and a pool. Looking cool, Mr. Gino. Outside right now, it's 91 in San Antonio, 92 in Del Rio, 90 in Rock Springs, and 94 in Catula. But the humidity makes it feel more like it's close to 100 in San Antonio. Take a look at Corpus Christi. It feels like 113 in Corpus Christi. That's the power of the humidity closer to the coast there. Uh, all in all, though, it'll continue to be hot for the rest of the day. We're expecting a high right around 102 southeast winds today, 5 to 15, and the sun's going to set at 837. It's still going to be hot, though, in the evening, even by 11 p.m. 87 degrees by 11 p.m. Now coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you how hot we're going to get for the rest of the week and we're starting to count those triple digit days. How does this year stack up to summer's past? Details ahead. The road work, you guessed it, it's expected to continue in and around the Alamo City, so just always good to know what to expect before you have to hit the roads. I want to talk about what's happening here. Kendall County, we talk about it all the time, but that bridge work is going to pick up again. Monday, July 10th, takes us all the way to the end of the work week, folks. Friday, July 14th, work starts at 9 in the morning and hopefully we will wrap around 3 in the afternoon. We'll see alternating main lane closures in both directions right there at Fredericks Creek Bridge, so just prepare for that. Let's take a jump over here to 281 on the north side side of San Antonio paving work. All right, this does also begin Monday, July 10th and takes us to the end of the work week, July 14th. Work also starts at nine in the morning and again, fingers crossed, it all wraps up at three in the afternoon. Alternating lane closures in both directions right there at Borgfeld Road. So prepare for that. One more here for you and you know about this one, Wurzbach Parkway, we have roadway improvements. This has been ongoing for quite a while, but it takes us all the way to the end of the month, July 31st. Again, that work starts at nine in the morning and should wrap at three in the afternoon. Afternoon. Alternating lane closures in both directions from Northwest Military Highway to Weedner Road. All right, if you have your phones out, grab, open the camera apps and scan the QR code because it takes you to our KSAT traffic page. I've updated the list of closures that are happening in our area, so plan that commute ahead of time. Right now, we are working to learn more about the damage left behind at an east side church after a fire there. The fire department says they found smoke and flames in the 700 block of G Street around 11 o'clock last night. That's not far from Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and I-10. That fire on the back side of the building, firefighters knocked it down pretty quickly and tried to minimize damage to the church. No one was hurt. It's unclear right now how it started. An east side murder case still has police stumped 12 years after someone shot and killed a man. Police say someone shot and killed 32-year-old Christopher Johnson on the east side 12 years ago. Officers found his body in a field on May 5th of 2011 between I-10 East and Martin Luther King Park. San Antonio police say he drove a red Ford Mustang. Officers found that car damaged in another area. If anyone has information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-7867. Police and Crime Stoppers also looking for two suspects who flashed a gun at a northwest side Walmart after taking items without paying. Take a look. It happened last month on June 16th on Bandera Road near West Woodlawn Avenue. Police say these two people walked into the store, grabbed several things, then tried to leave without paying. A 57 year old employee tried to stop them. That's when police say one of the suspects pulled out a gun to try to scare him off. Once again, you can Call Crime Stoppers or text them anonymously at crimes or 274637. Meanwhile, the city of San Antonio is working on a new grant that could save small business owners. Last week, we told you about a St. Mary's bar that is going out of business. And now, council members are working on a permanent and citywide grant. 
The goal is to keep other small businesses from being harmed by major construction projects. District 1 Councilwoman Sukor says council members are learning from the previous infrastructure grant program. Previously, business owners argued the grant was inaccessible to those who needed it the most. She says small business owners can weigh in on the current application process. Our city council really wants to work hard to make sure that they are feeling supported and preventing any negative impact so that we don't have situations like this occurring um, again when the next project is up. For now, the grant is in the early stages, receiving support from council members. The council is off for July, but the grant will be up for discussion in August. Texas Democratic Senator Roland Gutierrez has announced he's challenging Republican U.S. Senator Ted Cruz in 2024. Gutierrez has been very outspoken about the changes he believes need to be made after the deadly school shooting in Uvalde last year. In his official campaign video, Gutierrez said the massacre was about more than guns, but also about how Texas leaders have neglected the state. He also singles out Ted Cruz for his trip to Cancun in the 2021 uh, power grid collapse in the winter. But before he can face off against Ted Cruz, he'll have to win the primary election where he'll be facing U.S. Representative Colin Allred of Dallas. You can read more about this race right now on KSAT.com. From homeschooling to raising a steer, we'll introduce you to a student from Madison High School doing it all. And after a somewhat underwhelming first game, Wemby brought the heat last night and some aggression. We'll take a look at some of his highlights. While half the country is experiencing flooding, the other can't cool down. We'll see which states are being affected the most. Let's talk about that severe weather impacting millions across the country, damaging storms, causing once in a thousand year flooding. Some areas got as much as eight inches over the course of just a few hours. But as ABC's Rena Roy reports, it's a completely different story in other parts of the country. Search and rescue efforts underway in hard hit Stony Point, New York. An 80 year old rescued from his home after he became trapped by water. This family in Orange County, New York, desperately trying to control flooding in their home. Please stop! Please stop! Last night was complete chaos. We think that we've got uh, everybody uh, accounted for, but uh, you know, there are some people that could have been swept away. County officials issuing a state of emergency. One woman swept away and killed during the flash flooding. The uh, young lady that passed away uh, just got caught up with it. She and her family tried to evacuate their house, and she crossed with a with a pet and lost her footing and unfortunately was washed away down into a ravine. Suburbs north of New York City inundated by the heavy rain. It was extremely scary. I have never seen anything like this before. To just watch all of the water come running through my property, taking everything with it, and there was nothing that we could do. At the U.S. Military Academy West Point in parts of eastern Pennsylvania, they suffered once in a thousand year flooding, more than eight inches of rain most of it in about six hours. Cars, roads, and homes swallowed. In Vermont, rushing rivers. In Pennsylvania. Oh my gosh, look at this vehicle. Cars trying to navigate flooded streets. This van had to be rescued. Meanwhile, more than 35 million Americans are on alert for dangerous heat from California to Florida. In Southern California and parts of Arizona, temperatures will reach almost 120 degrees over the next week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, taking a live look outside with live cam on this Monday. All that rain and water up there, we cannot even find a drop around. No, and the aquifer is really starting to, to struggle, uh, continuing to struggle rather because of the lack of rainfall. The aquifer down more than half a foot in the last 24 hours, nearly 30 feet below the monthly average. But with a lack of rain, the pollen count looks okay. At least molds are the only allergens present in low amounts. All right, coming up in the forecast, adding on to our triple digit tally and a trivia question for you that you'll want to answer and a little bit of San Antonio history. Those details ahead.
Welcome back. A Madison High School program is designed to help students learn different skills and earn scholarships by raising animals. The program has changed the life of one teen who went from homeschooling to raising a steer. He loves to go walk and run in the pasture. This summer, Madison High School student Jada Murphy is hard at work raising Winston. He's the sweetest boy and I'm so excited for him to show because he has such good temperament. I think he'll do really good. So I'm hoping he'll place. She is part of the agri-science magnet program that teaches students discipline, responsibility, and animal care. They are given the opportunity to go to different shows, which will lead them into come February, the San Antonio Stock Show, or maybe even Houston Rodeo. But with that, if they do place their animals, they do make some money back, um, as well as maybe scholarships. I feel like the hardest part is creating a bond with your animal. You really have to spend a lot of time in here to get them to trust you. Murphy says she was homeschooling when she learned about this program online. I found this school. I said, wow, that looks amazing. And I took the tour and I knew this was the school for me. She says there's something here for everyone. Even if you're not interested in doing livestock, there's so many things in this program that you can do. Like you can decide maybe you want to be a vet or you can work in the meat industry or maybe you're interested in plants. I just think there's so many amazing opportunities here. And they worked so hard all summer, and you can yeah. tell. I was there this morning, and we had so much fun, but I'm excited for them to go to the livestock shows. Very cool. Yeah. I bet it was not cool in the barn. Actually, really? they have little fans in there, okay. so it wasn't as warm, but it is pretty warm in there. <laughs> we definitely need to think of all of our four-legged friends out there, Sarah, and everybody, because it is Yes, hot. it is hot. Thank goodness for air conditioning. Am <laughs> mm -hmm. I right? Yeah, so no with way. that, I wanted to ask you guys, Weather 101 for the day. If you were watching the 9 a.m., you may know the answer to this, so just watch. keep it secret. <laughs> All right, there we go, Tim. Then your knowledge is going to be tested, okay? okay? What year was air conditioning invented? 1894, 1902, 1914, or 1928? I'm going to go with uh, B. O2? Yeah. Fifth? Me okay. too, B. But it's probably oh. A. You guys, Yay! you guys, <laughs> rock. Okay, you got the correct answer. And here's what's interesting. The San so, Antonio, right? Yeah, That's well, right. on 19, in 19, uh, sorry, in 1902, on July 17th, Willis Carrier invented the first modern AC system. And it was only a few years later that the St. Anthony Hotel was the first hotel in the world with fully functioning ah, AC okay. in 1909. And the Milam Building was the first air-conditioned high-rise building in 1928. So Makes sense that San Antonio would have a part in some it, early air conditioning. Absolutely, absolutely makes sense. And by the way, I want you to take a look at your screen. So with today's forecast of 102, that'll make 16 100 degree days uh, up to this date. And when we compare the years past, last year by this time we had had 20, uh, 32 100 degree days. And in 2009, we had had 20 100 degree days by this point. So 2023 so far has been one of the hottest uh, starts to the summer. We'll have to wait and see what the rest of the summer uh, shows us. But honestly, we're going to add on to this tally by at least seven or 10 in the next few days because I do not see a, a shift in the weather pattern anytime soon. It is going to be hot and it's going to be triple digit hot outside. 91 degrees out there right now, mostly sunny skies. Those morning clouds have all but dissipated. Heat index value already close to 100. A southeast breeze at about 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at clouds and temperatures. We had some of those morning clouds, but they have dissipated. It's totally sunny and 92 in Del Rio, 93 in Pleasanton, 94 in Gonzales and 93 in New Braunfels. Looking at the KSAT 12 hour forecast for the day, we're going to be warming up to about 102 this afternoon with a heat index value up to 106. So yeah. It's hot outside. Even in the evening, temperatures are going to struggle to cool down all that much. We'll still be at 85 by midnight. Here's a look at the peak heat index this afternoon for your neighborhood. 109 in Castroville, 108 in Poteet, 108 in Seguin, 109 in New Braunfels, and 109 in Sabinal. In the weather setup, you know, folks up in Dallas have actually got a decent amount of rain the last couple of days. In fact, they had some flooding issues up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They're still seeing the influence from the heat high, but they're on a good part side of the heat high where they're at least getting a little bit of rain on the east side of this. We're in a bad position here in San Antonio. We're not going to see any significant rain chances in the coming days. It's just all about the heat. 102 tomorrow as that heat high builds overhead. 102 Wednesday, 103 Thursday. Look at most of the state is going to be anywhere from 100 to 110 degrees, and that heat's going to continue into next weekend too. All right. This 
this is kind of a sad looking map here, right? No rain chances, significant rain chances over the coming days. There's a small 10% chance for folks in the hill country, mainly near Fredericksburg to see an isolated shower tomorrow. But really, we are all going to be baking under that summer sun. Coming up in the forecast, big hot button issue, Saharan dust. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Saharan dust forecast, if uh, we're going to have much dust in the air, all of that stuff coming up in the next half hour. So much not to like about that forecast, yeah, but we sorry, like Sarah. Tim. Thank you. <laughs> all right, still to come. Before we know it, school will be back in session, and that means folks will be loading up on school supplies. On average, Texas teachers spend $449 of their own money on school supplies each year. So our KSAC community partners are starting a month-long school supply drive to help them out. It, it's it, all part of uh, United Way of San Antonio and Bear County's annual Right Start Project. This year it will be benefiting teachers in Somerset and Judson ISDs. If you want to do your part, you can stop by any of the six drop-off locations across the city. You see them there on the map. And they are asking for items like crayons, composition notebooks, number two pencils, hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, glue sticks, and so much more. You can find this list and hours of operation on our website, ksat.com. And July is Disability Pride Month, and it is time to celebrate people of all abilities with a wide range of needs. So we are teaming up with our KSAT community partners for a phone bank on July 20th. It is in support of Project Med. They work to improve the quality of life for those living with disabilities and illnesses through refurbishment, reuse, and distribution of medical equipment and other assistive technology. Still to come on the news at noon, Wemby redeeming himself last night after an underwhelming game on Friday night. He had some good numbers, but was it enough to get the win? And KSAT's Pigskin Classic is back. We'll give you all the details for this year's event when we come back. Guest during last night's game in Vegas, Coach Pop was in the stands checking out the young Spurs versus the Blazers. It took almost three minutes for the Spurs to get their first basket. Wemby had two points and four boards in the first, but it was the second quarter where he really got going. He scored nine straight, but the Spurs were still down at the half, 43 to 33. Let's move to the second half. Spurs able to close the gap a bit, but it didn't last. Blazers led by as much as 18 in the second half. And here is a look at your final for the NBA Summer League in Las Vegas. Spurs fall 80 to 85, but it wasn't a bad game for the number one draft pick. Wemby scored 27 points, had 12 rebounds, and he had three blocks. We just started off slow. I mean, turnovers, not moving the ball, uh, not playing D. So then uh, you see in the fourth quarter, we picked it up. I wish we would have won the game. And uh, it's, yeah, I, I think I could have done more to, to, to help my team win this game. It is, we got to keep learning. And uh, we've been, uh, we've, we haven't been playing our best for like three quarters, but in the fourth, we were really dominating. It clicked probably just late in that third quarter. And then we just weren't coming up with the rebound. So this is all beautiful. You talk about defense, but if they get two or three shots at it, it hurts you. So, that on top of just getting out and playing and, and, and a little bit more loose. And uh, I thought they looked good when they did that. So hopefully that's what we'll keep building on. Okay, so here's what's happening next. Based on the format, the Spurs have at least two more games out in Vegas. Tomorrow night they'll be playing the Washington Wizards. Then Friday night they'll take on the Detroit Pistons. <laughs> Good pace to this game. Nice rim run by Wembenyana. And one, and there it is. Looked like history in the making. He missed his first three shots, probably because of the jitters. However, Victor Wembenyana made his first bucket as a member of the Silver and Black on Friday night. Here's what his summer league coach and Wemby had to say about his debut performance. Yeah, I, th I think we were just making a read on how he looked and there was times I thought he was, he was like full of energy, obviously. He was excited to play and, you know, he hit the wall like anybody. It was a pretty physical game, so I thought he, he did a really good job of fighting through that stuff and, yeah, it was right where we wanted to be. Special moment, uh, really, really special, you know, to, to, to wear that jersey for the first time. It's really an honour and uh, overall, I'm, I'm glad we won this game. The era definitely underway. We are already looking ahead to this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. It's already bigger than last year because we've added a whole extra night of football. There will be one game on Friday night, August 25th, and then three games on Saturday, August 26th. Those tickets are on sale right now. 
KSAT insiders can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. Just head over to KSAT.com for more information. Right now, the search for a missing homicide suspect stretching into its fourth day after he broke out of jail. How bed sheets played a role in his escape plan. And a look at our friends at SA Live. Always food, always fun. Now that looks good, and now we're hungry here on the Nude Show. My stomach's really growling. <laughs> what happens when we come back. An urgent manhunt for a murder suspect continues. After he broke out of jail in Pennsylvania, police say he's an extremely dangerous self-taught survivalist with military experience. Pennsylvania State Police say officers have located multiple stockpiles or campsites they believe Michael Burham was using, and they now suspect he may be getting help. When I say that there may be uh, uh, one or more individuals assisting him, that's uh, part of that ongoing investigation. Certainly if they are, they're putting themselves in legal peril. We will prosecute them. Burham escaped from the Warren County Jail late Thursday. Deputies say he repelled to freedom from the jail's roof using bed sheets made into a rope. Authorities now believe he may have broken into a home about 16 miles north of the jail, allegedly stealing men's clothing and killing one of the couple's dogs. Meantime, officers are asking for tips from the public, offering a combined $9,500 for information leading to an arrest. We have new details now about last week's mass shooting in Philadelphia that left five people dead and four others wounded. Police now say the sus suspected gunman shot and killed his first victim nearly two days before he opened fire in a southwest neighborhood last Monday night. Investigators say the suspect allegedly shot and killed Joseph Wama on July 2nd, some 44 hours before he went on that shooting rampage. Relatives did not find Wama's body until July 4th, and detectives linked his death to the other shooting victims. The suspect is accused of murder, attempted murder, assault, and numerous other charges. He's currently being held without bail. Sports doctor Larry Nasser has been stabbed multiple times during an altercation with another inmate at a federal prison in Florida. The Associated Press is reporting he was stabbed in the back and the chest. This allegedly happened Sunday at the United States Penitentiary Coleman in Florida. Nasser admitted sexually assaulting athletes at Michigan State University and at USA Gymnastics, including Olympic medalists. The Kremlin says Russian President Vladimir Putin hosted mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin days after the commander led a short-lived rebellion. A Kremlin spokesman said the three-hour meeting took place on June 29th and also involved commanders from Prigozhin's Wagner Group. Putin gave an assessment of Wagner's actions on the battlefield in Ukraine and of the revolt itself. The spokesman said the Wagner forces pledged loyalty to Putin. The meeting came just days after Prigozhin led troops on a march to Moscow in order to demand a change of the defense minister. President Joe Biden is overseas right now as part of a three-nation trip to Europe. ABC's M. Wynn reports President Biden will head to a NATO meeting, but he also may have to address criticism about a controversial weapon the U.S. sent to Ukraine. President Joe Biden meeting first with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in London, ahead of a key NATO summit in Lithuania. Our relationship is rock solid. Then welcomed by King Charles III at Windsor Castle, it's Biden's first meeting with Charles since his coronation. The two world leaders holding discussions with investors who share their vow to strengthen their commitments to climate action. But dominating this high stakes trip to Europe, the question of whether Ukraine can join NATO with the alliance divided and Biden insisting Ukraine is not ready to join while at war with Russia. I don't think there is unanimity in NATO about whether or not to bring Ukraine into the NATO family now at this moment in the middle of a war. This comes as Biden is likely to face questions over the U.S.'s approval to send Ukraine cluster munitions, a controversial weapon meant to rain down smaller explosives banned in more than 120 nations, including two-thirds of NATO members, because of its record to cause indiscriminate civilian casualties. Ukraine has given the administration written assurances that it will use the munitions in a way to minimize the exposure to civilians. The White House has defended its decision. This is literally a gunfight. They're running out of inventory. And as Turkey and Hungary continue to block Sweden from joining NATO, which needs unanimous authorization, the U.S. president is expected to push hard for a deal this week.
Today, Turkish President Erdogan suggested he would approve Sweden's NATO bid if Turkey is allowed to join the European Union. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, let's take a live look outside again. 93 degrees. We have not hit 100 yet, but rest assured, we will. We will. We will hit 100 degrees and more uh, than that high forecast at 102 today. But all right, what's the sound of summer? When I say sound of summer, what do you guys think of? All of the bugs making noises. <laughs> yeah, the cicadas, right? Take a look at this. This is not from the movie Alien. This is from <laughs> from Sarah Acosta's uh, yard here. You can see there it is, the cicada emerging from its shell. By the way, fun fact about cicadas, they live for years as nymphs before they come out. And then once they come out, they only live for a couple of weeks to mate and to produce more cicadas and eat. That's about it. So if you've got cool pictures of this summer, whether it's cicadas or how you're keeping cool, make sure to submit them to KSAT Connect on our weather app. We love to show them on air because guess what? Triple digits are going to continue. This is a forecast for the foreseeable future highs well into the triple digits. We're going to add on to that triple digit tally, but coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about the tropics and I've seen on social media some discussion already about Saharan dust. Is it really going to be all that bad in the immediate future? Details ahead. All right, we'll look forward to that. Colorectal cancer rates are rising among younger adults, and it's still unclear why, but the latest data from the American Cancer Society shows one in five new cases of this cancer are patients in their early 50s or even younger. CNN's Mandy Gaither shows us what goes into the procedure and explains why doctors say you shouldn't be afraid of getting it done. At age 45, Merlan Pierre was having bowel problems. Constipation, stomach hurting a lot. Her doctor recommended a colonoscopy, but Pierre says she was nervous about the procedure and put it off for about a year. Then I decided, you know what, let me just go ahead and do it for the sake of my kids. I understand most people are somewhat fearful, but I think the fear is misguided. Dr. Bruce Salzberg says most patients are afraid of the bowel prep. From pills to liquids, different doctors prescribe different methods to clean a patient's colon out at home. The person will also be on a clear liquid diet the day before up until the procedure. Before a colonoscopy, anesthesia is given. Salzberg says patients don't feel anything during the procedure. This is a colonoscope, and yes, it's a long black tube, <laughs> the dreaded long black tube. And what it is is basically a camera. Doctors use knobs to control the movement of the camera, which can turn left, right, up, and down. We clean out the colon with our fluids that we have, and we insert air to inflate the colon. And then as we withdraw the scope, that's when we look in a 360 degree manner and check under all the folds, anywhere that looks to be suspicious and we identify if there's anything abnormal. If a polyp is found, it's removed, reducing risk of cancer. You don't feel that. You don't have any nerve endings in your colon. Pierre's procedure came back clear. She doesn't have to do it again for another 10 years. Coming out of it, definitely nothing to worry about. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Two very different movies cracked the top five at the weekend box office. Early estimates for the top five films in theaters. And fitness trackers can be useful tools during workouts, but the easy to use tech may also leave you vulnerable to hackers. How to make sure your personal information stays safe.